Ravens projected to return to profitability in 2023. It has been a while, my friends, since we have discussed the airline industry on this channel. What is happening, investors? It is your boy, Jack. I am not a financial advisor. And today, we're going to be taking a look at United Airlines, but also uh, airline stocks as a whole. We're going to compare United, Delta, American Airlines, Southwest, and the Jets, which is like basically the, the only ETF for airline-related stocks, and see how they've been doing over the last year. And it's probably going to surprise you guys. And we're going to speak about why recently we've seen Morgan Stanley and also Cowan come out and update us on united airlines and to an extent the the industry as a whole now i remember airlines were one of the first things uh, i got really involved in back in the 2022 crashes if we look at the chart here you can see airlines were one of the ones that crashed heavily from recent highs of about 100 for united airlines they went all the way down to 18. if you are an og on this channel you may well remember we played delta at one stage I initially bought them i think in the 30s they went all the way down to the 20s we dollar cost average end up selling out after only, I think it was four to six weeks with a 50, 60 something percent profit. It, it was a lot of fun. And you can see that, yeah, they, they continued going up. So they've had their downs from their recent highs. There's been a lot of volatility in airline stocks. And now I'm starting to see them get some more attention from analysts and people online. Even you can see the message volume on stock It's up 57% today. It was up nearly 80% yesterday. You can see consumer sentiment up 5% on United Airlines. People are getting excited about these again, so today we're going to speak a little bit about why. Really quickly, my friends, could I ask you, do hit that juicy like button. I think this is our ninth or 10th day of uploads in a row, and that's all thanks to the support you guys have been showing, you guys hitting that like button. I appreciate you all, I'm enjoying it. And also, it's my birthday today, so I mean, if you want to give me a present, just like, baby. And if you want to give me an extra present, subscribe if you're new around here. All of it helps me out so much, I appreciate you all. So just to set the tone, we're going to speak about this that literally just came out today. Airlines projected to return to profitability in 2023, says IATA, the International Air Transport Association. They said they expect the airline industry to push into the black in 2023, moving into a post-pandemic normal so they anticipate okay 4.7 billion dollars in net profits for 2023 now that doesn't sound like <laughs> anything much for an industry as large as the airline one but that is up from 6.9 billion in losses in 2022 and jumping to a profit for the first time since 2019 losses was 42 billion and a 137 billion in 2021 and 2020 respectively so you can see that over the span of three years going from 137 billion of net losses to 4.7 billion in net profits is actually an absolutely huge increase and the reason people would get excited was because if we can see this kind of trend continue to happen from 137 billion loss to 42 billion loss to 4.7 billion profits you could very well so expect huge profits if the trend continues going into 2025 and 2026 I believe that's why we're going to start seeing more analysts speaking about it now after especially the IATA comes out and gives us this piece of news. The North American market is the only region expected to swing to a profit in 2022. Also important to remember that. Resilience has been the hallmark for airlines in the Roni crisis. As we look to 2023, the financial recovery will take shape with a first industry profit since 2019. That is a great achievement considering the scale of the financial and economic damage caused by government imposed pandemic restrictions. And I mean, if you were around again following the airline industry at all in 2020 you'll know how insane it got and how quickly that happened airlines traditionally um have gone up over time you know here's a chart from 2012 all the way up to pre-crash levels and you can see there was lows of 16 dollars nearly got all the way back down there and highs of nearly 100 dollars but over the grand period of time they've steadily gone up now they do have poor years poor two-year periods even but in general you see it an upward trend so to see a crash off like this happen, you know something extreme was going on. But just think about it. Bring yourself back to those times. Remember airlines. Remember cruise lines. Remember anything that was holiday related. Or even most things that were, you know, discretionary related. Went down very, very quickly. And now things are starting to turn around. Which is actually exciting as well because there's still a lot of room to improve further. When you look at what's going on in China and etc. right now. 
that's going to bring profits up for airlines even higher when things do eventually get sorted. He goes on to speak about that here, a reopening in China and resilient travel demand in North America after the pandemic restricted travel plans is expected to buoy the industry against elevated costs. The challenges that airlines will face in 2023 while complex will fall into our areas of experience. The industry was built a great capability to adjust to fluctuations in the economy, major cost items like fuel prices, remember how crazy that got as well, and passenger preference. We see this demonstrated in the decade of strengthening profitability following the 2008 global financial crisis and ending with the pandemic. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty exciting time. Now, I would also like to point out the fact that, you know, from just very recent bottoms, let's say mid-October of $32 a share, these stocks have already gone up quite a bit. But they are still lower than they were two years ago as well. So, they kind of are at a middle ground right now. I think when people want to get into these for the long term is when, you know, we see things like this coming out, like macroeconomic news pointing us in the direction of, you know, the, the airline business turning profitable as opposed to not profitable yet again. Now, again, we have to keep in mind 4.7 billion in net profits in 2023 spread among an entire industry is not going to make much of a tangible difference on any one company's balance sheet. It's not going to make things, you know, appear all rosy and rainbows overnight. It's still going to take a long time for things like that to look good. Which is why I do believe that, you know, there's, I don't think this is an opportunity that's about to run away from us. I don't think $45, for example, is the lowest United Airlines is ever going to be again. I want to preface that before we continue with this video. So United Airlines is a top airline stock pick at Morgan Stanley for 2023. This just came out yesterday. They were upgraded to an overweight rating from equal rate. Key catalyst seen for UAL in 2023 are the carrier leveraging to international recovery, the new Chasm XF trajectory with the pilot contract, and a positive fleet renewal path exit exiting 2023. Earnings recovery out of the pandemic has kept pace with, if not led, peers. And again, we're going to compare them, and I have to say UAL is looking better. Back in 2020, uh, it was really Delta Airlines and American Airlines that people were focused on. But looking through the basics as of right now, United Airlines does seem to be in quite a decent position. There were some investor concerns around the growth at all costs mentality coming out of the pandemic. Long a bear concern especially with UAL leading the industry with dropping charge fees in 2020 and shocking the street with attractive, aggressive, long-term capacity growth plans in the United Next Plan revealed in June 2021. These concerns have not only been held at bay so far, but UAL seems on track to exceed its 2023 guidance and hit its 2026 guide issues 18 months ago, something even the biggest UAL bulls may have considered difficult at the time. So again, that's, I believe, why we're starting to see analysts in particular speak on UAL. I expect to see revisions on Delta, American, and Southwest in the near future a little bit more commonly. But right now, UAL is where it's at, short term at least. And then we also got United Airlines as the top airline pick at Cowan and by Quant Ratings, and Cowan named it their top airline's pick for the sector on Thursday as well. I mean, it's all looking quite good for them. And if you see the current price targets for UAL here, we just look at analyst rating by months, you can see that there are actually more buy ratings now than there has been pretty much ever, alongside less sell ratings than the last while, or maybe even, and even less hold ratings. So we've seen a few people bring them from holds to buys, and a few sellers get out. So Morgan Stanley, one, they have that $67 price target. Argos, who we just spoke about there, has that $52 price target. If we go back to some that happened there, uh, in October, $42 price target, $55, $40, and $65. So overall, analysts clearly seem to see that this $45 stock has a long way to go up in value over the next 12 months or so. And I bet if people were to give um, price targets for you know, 2025 through 2026, if growth continues as expected, I bet people would be willing to put their share price up towards that $90 range again. Now, it's very difficult to say that for sure. There's still a lot of things going on in the world macroeconomic ways that could go wrong in the near term. But I do think it's an interesting concept and an interesting industry to like a look, a take a look at. You will see that the volume for these companies being traded, UAL is much higher than peers. Uh, remember the fact this is a $45 stock. We see 1.6 million volume. We have Delta at a $35 with only 1.4 million. And then we have American Airlines, who's only $14 and $3.7 I mean, there's a lot more inflow and outflow going into UAL than any other of these plays as of this moment in time. And yeah, the, the Jets ETF is lagging behind considerably. From a technical point of view, it's the only one that last month was put out of buy. And right now, it's still, the opinion is 72% buy in comparison to any peers. From a technical point of view, it looks very, very solid. We can also see if we look at the six month change here, they are the only one in the green and the three month change is the highest by 
bar. And then if you take a look here, one thing I think people are gonna like about it right now is their annual sales aren't higher than Delta or American Airlines, but their last quarter net income is considerably higher than peers. I think the pandemic in particular made them change a lot of things in the way they, they act as an actual business and it's put them in a better position. And again, you can look at that one year chart. This makes it look a little bit clearer to see. Um, and this black line here is UAL. And yes, they are outperforming everybody by a considerable margin. You can see American Airlines still down about 22% underperforming. And again, guys, if this video does well and you would like my full opinion on any of these other airline stocks, just let me know down in the comment section. I'll be very happy to do it for you guys. Uh, it's hard to know when I speak about something that's not EV, <laughs> if, if it's going to flop or if it's going to do well. So just let me know in the comment section because I'm more than happy to make a more, another video like this in the future. Now, if we go ahead and look at some of the TSA checkpoint numbers, again, anyone who was around in 2020 for March and April will remember these. There was sub 100,000 days. Now, if you're not aware of what these are, this is the checkpoint travel numbers. So the amount of people going through TSA checkpoints. Again, you will see that uh, March and April, they had sub $100,000 days in 2020. It was back up to, you know, consistently over a million in 2021. And you can see over 2 million the same time in 2022. And if we go back to where we are right now, those numbers have held strong. Consistently seeing over 2 million on average. Of course, there's some outliers, both upwards and downwards. But th 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 it's quite clear to see that on a consistent travel basis, there's more people traveling even this year than 2021. And <laughs> tenfold at certain stages compared to 2020. The the trends are there, and that is why we are seeing, you know, first of all, we saw it go down to a 42 billion last over 137, and now we can expect profits to come back. But I just wanted to make this video nice and quickly for you guys. I think it is an interesting one. Again, I want to show you the chart really quickly and show you that overall it was in a little bit of a downward trend. It is trying to make another leg to the upside. Uh, I'm going to make a, a portfolio for myself over on Seek and Alpha just to follow the airline industry for the next while because I think it could get exciting relatively soon. Um, but as of right now, you know, there's a little gap created here as well. Maybe we could see another, you know, poor period, poor 10, 20% drop to the downside. And we could genuinely see some good long-term positions if you are somebody who wants to be in these airline stocks for the long term. I do still think that looking at them short term is, uh, is a big gamble. I think anything could happen in the upward or downward direction. Uh, you can see just how messy these charts still get. There's the 17th of February 2022, $50 a share. And by the 8th of March, they were out at 30. And then all the way back up to 50, only a couple of months later again. They are still very, very volatile. So just do remember that, my friends. I know this news is looking very, very positive. Don't get me wrong. But just so uh, I wouldn't go throw my life savings into UAL just yet. But anyway, guys, if you watch this video all the way till the end, you are a true legend. I really do appreciate you being here from the bottom of my heart. Your support means the world to me. I'm really enjoying being back, guys. So thank you for letting me do this. Uh, again, if you did enjoy, please do hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. I hope you have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll see you in another video very soon. Peace.